we had 98 percent guys welcome back to the off-grid garage here from sunny sunny hot australia once again with another test we are close to have fully charged both batteries and you're right we did the full charge test for both battery banks the last time and it wasn't the last video and we had a look how the different bmss and the different battery banks actually responded to a full charge and we also increased the absorption voltage from 3.45 volts to 3.5 3.55 and even 3.6 volts to see what is going to happen how the batteries are reacting and what the two different bmss are doing well if you haven't seen this video i'll link it down below or at the end of this video if i um, don't forget and uh, we've got 53 amps outside for the last test i had my absorption time set to three hours i usually absorb only for an hour maximum and this ensures the batteries are fully absorbed and are charged to almost 100%. At 3.45 volts with one hour absorption time, you are at over 99.5%. I have made many, many tests about this here on the channel. I link some of the videos down below as well, where you can see that it doesn't make sense to charge any higher. So in today's test, I want to change everything back to my normal settings here, 3.45 volt with one hour absorption and a tail current 0.5%, which is 2.8 amps. Is that correct? Yes. So basically the solar charge controllers stay at 3.45 volts, which is 55.2 for our 48 volt battery for one hour. And this is the constant voltage phase the solar charge controllers go in and then they basically wait until the current tapers off until all the battery cells are fully absorbed fully saturated and don't take any more energy and this is exactly why you then have almost 100 percent state of charge and the tail current setting exactly watches your current going into the battery if this current goes under 2.8 amps, well, then we assume the batteries are super fully charged and we can leave the absorption voltage and go into float voltage. And this again is a lower voltage, which ensures the battery stays fully charged and the solar charge controllers throttle back only to what your load actually needs. But at this point of time, there is no charge going into the batteries anymore. Okay, so here we have both screen recordings again. On the left, we have the QUCC BMS again. And on the right, there is our JK BMS. So at the moment, both are taking all the energy they can get from the solar charge controllers. And you can see the JK BMS here claims we have only around eight ampere hours left until we hit the 280, while the QUCC BMS thinks we are about 25 ampere hours away from 280 ampere hours. And with this test, I want to show you again how the balancing works in both BMSs here and ask the question if it is actually necessary to balance these batteries at all. Because as long as all the battery cells stay within the specifications of the manufacturer, we shouldn't pay too much attention about the balancing. So the balancing threshold is set to 3.45 volts in both BMSs. Yeah, yeah, 3.45 start balance voltage. So none of the BMS is, is actually balancing at the moment because none of the cells has actually reached this threshold. We are just having a quick look at the Victron Smart Shunt, claims 99% state of charge we have. So we should be only a few minutes away from 100% charge and then the charge controller should go into absorption mode. So here again, the JK PMS battery charges almost twice as fast as the old battery with the QUCC BMS. Reason for that is the bad terminal connections in the old battery, which need to be all redone. And that's why we have a fairly large spread across the cells here as well. 34 millivolt in the QUCC and only 16 millivolt deviation in the JK BMS. Okay, and we are now balancing with both BMSs at the same time. The sun just came back after this massive cloud. And all the charge controllers are still flashing blue, so we are still in the bulk charging phase. So we are still charging as much as we can. But we can see now single cells are hitting 3.45 volts, and of course the balancer kicks in again. 
So QUCC does a passive balancing and only discharges these cells with a green B behind them for balancing. The JK BMS, on the other hand, has an active balancer. That means it discharges the cell with the highest voltage and uses this energy to charge the cell with the lowest voltage. So it does an energy transfer. And you can see this with a blue number, which is our cell with the highest voltage and the cell with the red number is the one with the lowest voltage. And here at the moment blue is flashing and we've got minus 2 amp of balance current so blue gets discharged at the moment into a capacitor and then the current will turn positive and we are using this energy from this capacitor and charge the cell with the red color with the lowest voltage. So this is a far more energy efficient method to balance a battery pack the QCC just burns off energy. And this is A, not very efficient and B, not very effective. As you can already see, we have, we have over 100 millivolt deviation in the QCC BMS now, while the JK BMS has only 28 millivolt deviation. And all the charge controllers have reached absorption time now. So we will absorb now for one hour unless the current goes below 2.8 amps, which is 0.5% of the whole capacity. So, and here comes the thing. I mean, should I be worried about the QECC, BMS or battery? Because it is so far out of balance now at 55.2 volts. Should I be rather top balancing it again to make sure all the cells have the same voltage at this state of charge now at 100%? Okay, let's check the smart shunt. Smart shunt is on 100%. The last time it was fully charged was exactly 23 hours and 12 minutes ago. So yesterday when we did the other test. See, the Victron smart shunt claims we still have 1.3 ampere hours to charge to reach really 100%. And now the sun comes back. And this is the maximum the batteries actually take at the moment, 3 amps for the QECC battery and 2.9 amps for the JK battery. So they are almost fully absorbed already. And because the current is so low now, I wouldn't be surprised if the solar charge controllers go into float mode any moment. Because the batteries just don't take any energy anymore. So it's not worth keeping them on 3.45 volts or 55.2. And here again, the JK PMS does a fantastic job with the balancing. You can see 19 millivolt deviation and none of the cells is actually peaking. While in the QECC BMS, cell number 12 is the highest at the moment with over 3.5 volts. And number 7 is still the lowest, same as yesterday. Because yeah, at the moment there is less than 2 amps going into this battery. So cell number 7 and 9 have a really hard time to catch up now because the charging current is so low. The sun is fully out but there's no current going into the batteries anymore. So I'm expecting the solar charge controllers will go into float mode every second. So guys, yeah, well there you have it. Fully charged the battery now. We have got 15 millivolt in the new battery, deviation in the new battery and 150 in the old battery. Um, this is still not of a concern because we are not exceeding any specifications of any of the cells in the old battery. See, even cell number 12 is at 3.54 volts. It is not over 3.65, which would be the maximum charge current for these cells. So in this case, I don't need to do anything. All the batteries are working fine. The balancer is working on each of the battery banks more or less effective and efficient, but the balancers are working and the BMS takes care of everything else. If a cell is really reaching 3.65 volts, the BMS will just turn off the battery bank altogether. Ah, I just said it. We are in float mode just now when I stopped the screen recording. So all the solar charge controllers in one hit go into float mode. And now we can see we are lowering the voltage again of the battery pack to uh, 3.35 per cell. 53.6. Thank you.
So if we have a look at the Victron system, we can see the solar charge controllers have completely shut off. And now we're actually discharging the battery slowly until we hit the 53.6 volts. And then the solar charge controllers will kick in again and supply power for and supply power for our loads, AC and DC load. Well, quite a few people have actually asked under my videos if if the BMSs can actually communicate with the inverters or the solar charge controllers. And while this is possible via CAN bus or RS485 communication, I don't really see an advantage of doing that because as you can see, even with a completely non-top balanced battery here, I mean, this one hasn't been fully charged for months now, there is no problem with the battery and the BMS takes actually care of everything. What would be different if the BMS would now communicate with the charge controllers? I mean, in this case, nothing because the batteries were already fully absorbed. So throttling down the charging current would not make any difference at all. And yes, if the BMS can communicate with your charge controllers, it can throttle or even turn off charging if one of your cells is peaking above, say, 3.6 volts. This is something we can set up in the system. Or if you discharge your battery fully, it can also turn off your inverter. But here again, what is the benefit? All the inverters have their own setting when they disconnect from the battery at a low voltage. The same the solar charge controllers are disconnecting or stopping charging once the battery hits a certain voltage. So why is there a communication necessary between the BMSs and solar charge controllers or inverters? I know some of you guys have set this already up, but what is the real benefit? What is the additional features you get with such a setup? Well, at the moment, I cannot come up with anything. The system works like this just fine. So there is no communication between charge controllers or inverters and the BMS actually necessary. Well, the only real benefit I can think of is if the solar charge controllers throttle down charging or even stop charging if one of the cells goes over 3.6 volts, I would say. Because if they keep charging the battery, eventually the BMS will shut down the whole battery bank because we are reaching the threshold of 3.65 volts and then the BMS takes care of the safety and shuts down the whole battery bank. If there would be a communication between BMS and solar charge controllers, this would not happen because the solar charge controllers throttle down the charging or even stop so the cell does not go over 3.65 volts. And in this case, you won't lose your battery bank. But then again, is it necessary to have this battery connected all the time if all the battery banks are fully charged anyway? Remember, this happens when the battery is maximum, maximum charged at 100% state of charge. What does it matter if I have four or five battery banks here and the BMS turn off one or two or even three of them because of a high peaking cell? Obviously, you only charge your batteries full if there is more sunshine out there than you have load connected to your system. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to fully charge your battery. And if this is the case, the solar will then supply power to your load anyway, and you don't need the batteries at all. So it doesn't really matter if the BMSs turn them off for safety for a while. But yeah, guys, let me know down in the comments below what would you see as a benefit of having a communication between the BMSs and solar charge controllers or the inverters or even both. I mean, at the end, I will probably connect the BMSs as well to my system here but more for monitoring purposes. So I can actually remotely see what the BMSs do, what single cells do. Monitoring would be the only benefit I would have at the moment from this setup. I always want to know what's going on in the system, so. Okay guys, so far this video from this nice and sunny hot Australia Sunday here. Thank you for watching. Thanks for all your support here on the channel. Comments, likes, donations using my links. This is all much appreciated. Thank you so much for your ongoing support here. And until the next video. Exactly. And thank you again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. Oh man, the sun is shining and the battery is full. Let's charge the car. There we go, and the Phoenix has just started as well.
and there we go generator and multi plus working together now to charge the vehicle amazing and here 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 there's something new again see this little icon up here you click on it you can actually control your multi plus now from the mobile phone see the current limit sits on 9 amps at the moment um, but I can choose well the generator the Phoenix should supply only 6 amps and then you can see the Phoenix inverter throttles down delivers only 6 amps which is 1.2 kilowatts and the multi plus does the rest until 4 kilowatt to charge the vehicle or we can say okay let's go to 10 and then you can see the Phoenix inverter ramps up to 2 kilowatts and the multi plus delivers the rest again you can also tap in here and say well, 8.5 amps there you go it now adapts to 8.5 amps which is 1.73 kilowatt isn't that amazing just from your mobile phone from wherever you are you can control all these settings now from the website from the Victron VRM there's this little icon up there brand new amazing stuff